right, you guys, we are out in the wilderness with the Forerunner right there. We're gonna see if, how capable is this Forerunner with the three inch lift? Now, this doesn't seem too bad, but we can, uh, come on. I don't think she's, it doesn't seem too bad, but with the, uh, the Forerunner, let's see how good it actually, oh wow, I was just going through it like nothing. through it like nothing this car is extremely impressive we st <laughs> we stumbled up across this little uh area it's i promise you it's a lot like it's a lot crazier in person but <sighs> it should be good most definitely should be good it's not bad not bad at all literally goes through like it's nothing. We need a little bit more of a challenge, TBH. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> she really left me. And this is all uphill. Yeah, it looks a lot crazier, like in person, but being at the truck so big, you can't really, can't really tell that it's, you know, going through these things. But it's very capable, very capable truck. We came across this little, this little problem here. This thing is extremely deep, and there's like this crazy like crack. So if the Forerunner can pretty much navigate through this, which I'm pretty sure it can, I don't see any issues. It should be fine. But we are going to see. Oh, we're gonna see what this Forerunner is talking about. I was just saying, it literally makes everything look like butter. Like, it's hard to tell on camera. It's literally hard to tell on camera because everything with this car makes it look like nothing's happening. Like, Toyota did such a great job with this car. And the fact that there is a three inch lift, like I mentioned, we'll go over that later, but there is a three inch lift on this car. So it does make it, you know, a little bit more easier to drive. All right, guys, we are with my lovely girlfriend and her 2002 Toyota 4Runner. This is the same exact truck we took from Maryland all the way across the country to California where we're at. Right now, we hauled this thing with a, what was it, 3,800 pounds? Yeah, about. Yeah, 3,800 pounds, completely stock. It looked nothing like this. Right now, it's a little bit beefed up because there are some aftermarket mods on it that we are gonna go over shortly. But before that, introduce yourself. Who are you? What do we have here? This is Raquel, what have you? What have you brought us today? Uh, this is O2 Forerunner, um, SR5, 4x4. We got like about almost 300,000 miles. God damn. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, just got it back in May and this is what it's turned into. So uh, this is definitely not stock. So go ahead, tell everyone what you got done to the car. Let's start with. In the front, we got um, the Tundra Bill Stide 6112s. Uh, a little notch up the typical 5100s. What um, kind of lift does that give you? It's about a two and a half inch uh, with adjustable lift, uh, notches, whatever you call it. You know, yeah, I see. Uh, yeah, it's a, about the almost lifted to the max, about two like threads away from that. And then in the rear, the Rough Country Extended Travel, six inch Extended Travel uh, struts. Yeah, you can't really see it. So just relocated it. And um, yeah, I guess I kept the sway bars because of the lift. I had to uh, get the adjustable one. So got some um, SEQ Fab front and rear sway bars uh, with Heimlinks. So extra reinforcement. What about these uh, tires? Because they are definitely not stock tires. Pretty grippy. Yeah, very groovy. 285, 75s uh, on a 16-inch uh, pre-runner Tundra tire, or excuse me, wheel. Uh, so yeah, they do the job, and they feel real nice on the on the highways. Not too much shake going on, vibes, and yeah, 
like it. Yeah, as you guys can tell from the previous clips, we are literally well off the main road. We're somewhere, somewhere in the mountains. Damn near off the grid, but it the tires did well. The lift actually helps with something. From factory, the lift is actually, the factory setup suspension is pretty capable, but you're not able to do a lot of things you're able to do with a three inch lift that this truck has. Interior wise, the car is pretty stock. It has the typical 90s, 90s material. So to give you a little perspective of how tall the car actually is, this is what has to be done to get in. She gotta literally put herself well, knee high. It's at my knees, it's above my knee. And I'm about 6'2", so getting into this car for me is not too much of a task, but for someone short like her, so it's gonna take a while. As someone short as me, it's great. <laughs> Everyone knows. Just a little overview of the 4Runner. It's not really much done other than suspension, wheels, and tires. But it's good. Also, that relocation kit she was referring to, it actually pushes the front strut out a bit. So we have this custom bracket that was made to where the rear struts can sit out here. It's easy. It's easier to access, easier to maintain, and it just makes life a bunch easier. Compared to how it was in the rear, from factory, it's like behind this wall, you really can't get to it unless you have some sort of like specialty tool or you cut it off. So a lot of 4Runner guys, they actually relocate it out here. 4Runner, Tacoma and Tundra, I assume, they always relocate the rear struts to the outside. As it's literally the very next day. And as you can see, we did get some rain out here in the desert, but this is not the topic. Today we are going to be installing some spotlights onto the forerunner so these are actually like they're not supposed to be like centered like this so what we're gonna end up doing is mounting these right here on the truck so it had i don't know if it'll sit like this or i don't know how high it'll sit up but we do have brackets for it as well all right i was wrong so the brackets are actually going to sit on the a pillar so it will sit something like this put that in there right in the guard area the rain guard and it'll sit something like that but obviously i have it backwards you get the idea it'll sit in there so i marked it and we're gonna have to trim this weather piece as well that way we can at least get this uh inside the groove went ahead got this bracket trimmed see how it matches up with the lines actually for this one i did a straight cut through and it actually sit oh wait doesn't go like that it actually sits very nice, exactly like that. So when I close it, this is how it'll sit in there. So you still have that seam going all the way across. So it looks like it's an OEM piece, which is good because you know, your boy love OEM plus type stuff. So we are gonna get these brackets. I'm not gonna mount it every video. I'm not gonna mount it just yet. I'm gonna have to mark off the holes that I'm gonna have to screw into with this wrong way once again. So is this wrong? Yeah, right, that's good. So gonna have to screw or going to have to mark those holes exactly where I want it to sit. And then I can go ahead, drill my pilot holes and then use some self tappers if I have any. And then this has to be painted as well because we don't want a silver bracket. With the bracket mounted, it's on there. Night it's on there. It's like it's literally moving the entire truck, but we got the bracket mounted. It's not going anywhere Next step we just have to paint this thing. So I already labeled it driver's side Yeah, I want to see how it, Okay, it'll be pretty good. So we already have, have a labeled driver's side We're just gonna take these off and get this sprayed in matte black. So we went ahead and got the spotlight mounted as you can see we got it painted as well looking nice we haven't wired it yet but what I will do is uh, so I have the door closed now because there is sealant on the inside to keep it waterproof still and so water doesn't you know get into the channels and get into the interior but right now it's pointing outward so I think I'm gonna angle it a little bit like towards the middle of the car that way when we're driving we can have visibility on what's directly here. So it's still modular, like you can still move it left and right, you know, things like that. But for right now, I'm going to have it centered 
That way we can see everything that's in front of us. But it does look pretty cool. Uh, it is type small. I think this is about, what, two and a half inches? Maybe, maybe a little bit bigger, probably three. But it looks cool, it looks cool. And the car is still a work in progress. It's not done, it's still a work in progress. So we are going to start mounting the passenger side uh, spotlight and pretty much do the same process all over again that we did to this side. Okay, fast forward about an hour or so. I made this, like I routed the wires down here because I didn't like it in the door and it's cranked. So what I did was I ended up unbolting the top portion of the fender. As you can see, it sticks out a little bit, but when I it's unscrewed now. So when I screw that back in, it'll be good. And then we can go ahead and screw those in. What I did was I routed the negative all the way under the fender and then popped up through here so it looks you know, factory. And just to make sure it worked, I made a lead wire from here to connect to our power, which it won't be on all the time. It's gonna be a fog light, so it works. So now we can pretty much just go ahead and finalize some of these connections. As mentioned, I wanted it to be wired to the fog lights. So these are the original fog lights. For some reason, only one of them works. I don't know which one it is, but I already did like a pre-wire as you can see here, just so I know which wire is which and gave it power. So we are gonna see if I turn the switch. Yep. So if I turn the switch, turns on, off, on, off. So this is very good. Very, very, very good. Cool. So we can now finalize where these wires are gonna be routed throughout the engine bay. I'm thinking about having it run um, under here and then straight down there. That way the wires are hidden. We have completed the install. It is, it's looking pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. It actually looks a lot better. So everything works as normal. If I go over here and put the keys in, see that. With the turn of the fog lights, the OEM fog lights, we have both our pods running as they should, along with the HID. So that is definitely, definitely, definitely a plus in my book. These things are extremely bright as well, so these will definitely hold up for nighttime driving if needed. Great install, great job done. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. I know it was kind of long. I hope you enjoyed going over the Forerunner, whatever mods my girlfriend has done to this car, including our new pod lights or spotlights, whatever you want to call them. But got Guy over here. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.